in today's video, I'm going to show you how I painted this leg. So this is the leg of a Peloton engine. And I've got another one here. Because these days, we only paint the legs of things on YouTube. That's right. So I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. And I'm going to be using this method for painting pretty much the entire Peloton engine. Uh, anywhere that's metallic anyway. And that's the majority of the model. So I'm going to start off with some Vallejo Model Air. That's the wrong one. Some Vallejo Model Air black metal. Just called black. This is the metallic version. Make sure you get the one with the silver, silver label. If in doubt, use the little number there. I'm going to be using a <coughs> nice soft makeup brush. My dry brush. Nice and soft. This is a, a chic detail brush. It's like £1.50 from a local shop. You just want something that's got a nice big round tip. Very fluffy, soft. That's what you want. And I've just got this on a regular palette. And I'm going to wipe off most of it on a piece of tissue. And we're just going to dry brush it on. So, got my leg mounted. And I'm just kind of doing this every which way at the moment. You can already see it's starting to work. This is a very nice, very dark metal that's a really good base colour if you want to do something in a nice dark steel tone. And by dry brushing it on we get the smoothest coverage, the thinnest layer that we can. And we also leave it dark in the recesses. The black metal applied all over the model just with dry brush. Now I'm going to do a highlight with VMA Gun Grey. It's one higher than the previous colour. And we're going to do the same kind of thing, but we're going to make sure we wipe off more paint. And we're going to use a lighter touch. And we're only going to go um, with down strokes. So we're only catching the top edges of everything. So make sure you know which way up is on your model, because it might not necessarily be the direction you think it is. On this case, it is. We're just going to go very gently down. This might not look like it's doing much, but it's just adding a little bit of an extra shine to those topmost edges. And in areas like this, we're going to do it a little bit across like that as well. So that's good. And that's pretty much it for dry brushing. If you wanted to stop there, you could. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some edge highlights slash a little bit of damaging weathering with some VMA steel. Don't need very much of this. I right, just need a relatively sharp brush. I'm using a Rosemary & Co. Series 33 size 1. And I'm not really thinning this down very much because I'm kind of using it as just a very precise dry brush. But I'm going to take edges like this and just carefully apply a highlight onto the top facing parts. Uh, anywhere I think there may have been scratches built up. For this round part that's here, I'm actually going to do a thing that I saw on Instagram. I can't remember exactly who did it, but they've won a Golden Demon, so I'm copying them. Um, they didn't win a Golden Demon with this particular technique, but if you think about uh, a machined part, then you'll usually be able to see machine markings. On the Peloton engine, this would definitely be true because they're not built for looks. They're built to do their job. They're very, very utilitarian. Um, they're holy, but they're still, you know, they're, they're designed to be sent out there and have someone uh, get killed and then be brought back and then rebuilt and do it all over again. They're very, very simple machines. But what we're going to do is we're going to simulate the machining marks. I've just watered this paint down just a little bit so it flows better off my brush. 
and we're going to start by just painting some lines down towards the middle that form a kind of triangle. It's a very subtle effect. We'll go over it again with a, a brighter metallic, but want to start with the steel first. So do that, and that's like one quarter done. Then skip a or one eighth, I guess. Skip a skip a segment, and then do it again. And we'll keep. We'll go around and do this over this entire circular section. So if you can see that, getting a kind of look of, a bit of a look of the machined milled parts there. I'm going to go around, I'm going to finish doing the edge highlights around the rest of the model with the same paint. And I'm going to add in a few little scratches, I'll just show you how I do that now. So on an area such as Ooh. Let's well, let's say on the feet there, they're going to get all banged up. So it's just starting on the inside and pulling to the outside. Might be hard to pick up there on the camera. And it's because where you start, you're going to have the thinnest point of your brush. Where you finish, it's usually going to thicken up. So if you want to create little scratches like that, it's usually best to start where you want it to end and to pull to where you want it to start. And this will just make it look like there's little nicks and dings in the metal that are catching the light differently. So I'm going to go around the whole model and do that, and I'll be right back with you. Okay. There we go, I've gone around and I've done highlights and scratches with the steel colour across the entire model. I'm now going to use a little bit of chrome just to do some final highlights with that. And we're basically done painting the steel coloured metallics. So I'm only doing this in the very brightest spots. Chrome is slightly brighter than the steel, not a lot brighter. Um, you can add a little bit of white to it, and I think I'm going to. A little bit of BMA uh, dead white. And this makes it slightly less reflective, but it does make it like consistently brighter. So you can see it on my hand there. It's actually it will look brighter from more angles. So just on the areas where I want it to be the very brightest spots. So some little things up here and I'm going to do it try and get it in the middle of the machine markings there we go I'm just going to do that around the rest of the model okay that's the steel colour all done. I'm just going to use a little bit of black. I'm just using a pattern black here. I'm going to thin this down to a glaze. I'm just going to paint some shadows in. So just adding water to it Oops. until got something a little bit like that. And I'm just going to paint this as I would paint the shadows on anything else. Glazing it. Into the darker areas. And what this will do is it will actually mat down some of the metallics as well as making them darker. So it will reduce the shine and it will reduce the brightness. So 
So a little bit down towards the bottom of the feet. Underneath any of these little overhangs. And on the lower half of this round part. I'll just give it a little bit more of a dome shape. And if I was to apply a wash to this entire model, it wouldn't sit in the correct places in order to shade it correctly. So that's why I'm doing it this way. It takes a little bit longer to apply, but it takes a lot less time to dry. And you have a lot more control over it. Okay, so that's those shadows painted. Now next what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use some Nuln Oil. I'm just going to wash this into the deepest recesses, essentially the panel lines, any gaps that are quite hard to actually just paint the glaze into. So around the outside of this. And then I can just use my thumb to clean it off the top surface, the flat surface where I don't want it. But I do want that dark line around that part. And in here. And also along the edge of this weird bit of trim that is really hard to reach and I'm just not going to paint it. Because you can't really see it and it would be in shadow anyway. If you want to try and paint this, you can. There's a weird bit of trim underneath this and you can't get to it very easily, but I'm just going to make sure I've got a little bit of the null oil running along that edge there, just to darken it down and kind of see it. And because this is regular null oil, not null oil gloss, it will dry with a more uh, satin finish than a gloss finish which again will reduce the shine on those areas, which is what we want when we're shading metallics. We actually want to reduce the amount of shine that's present. Okay, that wash is dry. And now I'm gonna start rusting up this metal a little bit. So I'm gonna start with a scrag brown and I'm gonna water this down to a quite a thin wash consistency. So I want it to be like that. And I'm just using quite a fine pointed brush and I'm picking areas where water would have gathered uh, or perhaps rust is harder to remove from the metal chassis. So around these rivets for example, that are here, just letting it kind of flow into the small spaces maybe putting a few little spots in areas where we want to hide any mistakes we've made. Always a good use for rust and other weathering techniques. So I'm not necessarily going to run into every single recess. And the great thing about weathering is that there's generally nothing you can do wrong with it. Indeed, any mistakes kind of add to the randomness, which is something that you want. So let's get it around some of these exposed ribbons here. And I've already decided that I want this Peloton engine to be quite rusty. I want it to look like they keep reusing the same one in order to punish people. kind of blot it with your finger as well if you get a little bit too much in areas where you don't necessarily want it that strong. And gonna let it run into that kind of crease there in order to show that the water may have accumulated there. 
and cause more rust to occur. Get around with some of these rivets up here. And you can draw little streaks with the tip of your brush. Just create little watermarks and rust marks. So I'm gonna go around the entire model and do some more of that. Okay, there we go, that's the Scrag Browns dry. You notice it's dried a lot darker than when it went on. Once the water's evaporated, the paint's usually a lot darker. And I'm gonna do the same thing with Fire Dragon Bright in a smaller area. So this is just kind of giving it a little bit of extra color. You don't usually want only one color for rust. You want multiple colors. It might be quite hard to see on the camera. Then we can always use your finger or a brush to remove anything that's got a bit too much before it dries. It's a bit too thick. Water it down a bit more. So there we go, that rust layer is dried. And our final steps, I'm just gonna use a little bit of Acrox Earth Shade. I'm just going to use this to shade and tint some of the rust areas just a little bit. Just tone them down and meld them in the rest of the model a little bit. It will also add a bit more color variation to the rest of the metals. is always handy to have when you're doing true metallics like this. It will also, because it will dry slightly matter than the metallic shine, dull down the areas around the rust. I'm just using this straight from the pot. So no real need to thin this down any. Just don't let it pull too much. Keep control over it, but you don't need to thin it down super much. Okay, that's enough. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this piston and this ball joint here with just straight neat steel paint. I'm going to thin it down a little bit just so it flows a little bit easier, but I'm going to just try and cover those completely. So first the piston. It may take a couple of coats to cover nicely, but you want to keep it smooth because you don't want it to go lumpy and metallic paints can be quite bad for going lumpy. 
There's the uh, metallic flake in there. It can add texture if you're not careful. So that's one coat on the piston. I'm just going to do the same on the ball. I'm going to leave this middle bit and I'm just going to highlight that at the end. And the reason I'm painting these differently is because they're moving parts, which are exposed. So they'd be better maintained than the rest of the chassis. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to just use a little bit of, of uh, non-oil. I'm going to run this into the corners around these bright steel parts to give them a little bit of delineation. This isn't a full all-over wash, this is just to try and create the illusion of a gap. So just let the capillary action pull it into the areas you want it. Okay, that's dry. Now I'm going to use some contrast from Magos Purple to create the appearance of a kind of um, grease or lubricant around those parts. So I'm just using this straight from the pot. Just getting a tiny bit on my brush. And on the piston, I'm focusing it around the top. It's kind of brushing it towards the top. I'm going to create some kind of a t kind of tide ring further down. So, brushing it in towards the top while it's still nice and wet. And then the further down. creating kind of a ring around it, as if that's where the piston is fully inserted and grease has gathered around that point. Again, this is very subtle. You can skip this step if you're just trying to get an army together. And on the ball, I'm going to run this into these edges where it comes into contact with the rest of the chassis. It looks like you might get be getting a tie mark. Just clean your brush and feather it out. Okay, that's two passes with the Magus purple. That's all you really need. And now I'm going to take some Seraphim Sepia. And I'm just going to use this to kind of give it a generally greasy look. So I'm actually going to run this all over the piston, focusing this slightly more towards the bottom rather than the top. But it will just tint to a slightly greasier colour and all the way around the ball as well. And that's those brighter sections done. The one final thing I'm going to do for the piston is I'm going to take some Balthazar Gold and 
I'm just going to paint this little part here with that very carefully. Just so that we get an extra colour down there. And so this part stands out a bit better. And I'll do this on a few different spots around the model. Because if the entire model was just one colour of metallic, it would be very boring. Okay, so now I'm going to paint these spiky bits in a brass colour. And for this, I'm using uh, Valero Model Air Bright Brass but I'm mixing it with some Incubi Darkness. And this is because Bright Brass has really terrible coverage and I'm going to be painting this on. And I want to also darken it down a little bit for the base colour. So I'm mixing them together. About two to one, maybe more than that, four to one. Bright Brass to Incubi Darkness. And this has a kind of a weird effect, but it helps it cover black much better. And then we're going to highlight it up to Bright Brass at the end. And this will take, even with this added in, it will take a lot of coats to build up. Okay, so that's half full coverage done. You can still see that the green kind of comes through at certain angles. But there is an unmistakable brass color to the metallics. Now I'm going to take straight bright brass, neat, and start laying it up, highlighting this. making sure this is on the upward spacing surfaces and any sharp points. And again, the coverage on this paint is really bad, but it does build up into a really nice finish after a few layers. Okay, that's it covered up with, well, highlighted up with the Bright brass. Now I'm going. I've added a tiny amount of chrome paint to my bright brass because I want to create a highlight with it. So it's really you only need a really tiny amount of chrome paint to be able to highlight this up. But you just want it to be slightly off the bright brass color, so that when you do an edge highlight along this, it shows up. And it'll be nice and shiny because that chrome is super shiny. And it'll still have that brassy tint. Okay. So that's the metallics part of that done. Now I'm going to paint some verdigris. So I'm going to start by thinning down some Cabalite green. Just with water. turning it into a wash consistency. So again, it's very wet. Blow up my brush with that. I'm just gonna run this into some of the recesses, especially around the spikes, creating little patchy areas. pretty much at random. Okay, so that's dried. Now we're going to use Sybarite Green. We're going to wash thin this down again. 
not quite as thin as the uh, previous color because we want a bit more control over this. And I'm going to try and place this inside the areas of green that we just placed. So this is slightly more precise work, just kind of stippling it. inside those areas we washed with the cover light green. And you may want to do a couple of layers of this, letting each one dry. Very similar to what we did with the orange rust, just a different set of colors. Okay, I did two coats with the old uh, Sybarite green there. Now I'm going to take some Gauss Blaster green. I'm not really going to thin this down much at all so that I've got maximum control over it because I want to just use this on the very tip of my brush. And I'm actually just going to use this to highlight again inside of that Sybarite green and, it, and also just kind of give the verdigris a little bit of a highlight effect. And now we have one very verdigreed up piece of brass. I'm just going to go back in with my brass highlight colour and just pick out some of those edges where I may have gone over the top a little bit. Just break up the pattern a little bit more. One last thing I like to do is take a little bit of Inky by Darkness on the tip of my brush and just kind of paint little shadows underneath some of the patches of verdigris. Just try and make them appear a little bit more three dimensional. It doesn't take much time to do. adds a little bit more dimension to it. Okay, last step for the whole model. This is a penitent engine. So someone's on there getting killed. Blood for the blood god. I'm going to take this straight out of the pot, put it on my palette so that I've got more control over how much I have on my brush. Wipe most of it off on my hand. And I'm just going to do a few tiny little streaks on areas where I think blood might have poured or dripped. So up here on the top of this leg and kind of on the leading edge of everything. As if it's gotten splash back from whatever's being buzz sword. And the feet usually, because kicking and stomping as it does, some people got trampled. And certainly blood would have gotten all over the feet. Because, you know, gravity, blood. And if you remember all that work we did to make the uh, machining tool marks, you can't see it really obviously, but you can kind of get the impression of the texture of it as you move it around in the light. And that's what we wanted. If it was really obvious, it would have looked fake and painted on. But as it is, it's just there, just adding a little bit of texture, a little bit of difference, a little bit of variance that suggests machining marks rather than screaming them. 
And that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, tag me on Instagram with all of your attempts if you've followed this tutorial. I'd be really interested to see how they turn out. You can uh, subscribe to the channel there. Check out my Patreon there, where you get early access to all my videos. YouTube thinks you like this over here. And I'll see you around. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.